Good morning to everyone on the call once again. My name is Adewali Liedi. I um, manage the Greek business desk of EcoBank Nigeria. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the Youth Empowerment and Capacity Building Program by EcoBank and, and IIT. Today, I'm, I'm excited to speak to you about the tremendous opportunity that the training program portends. Uh, for you to gain valuable skills in agri business. As we all know, agri is a vital sector in Nigeria and it contributes significantly to Nigeria's economy. It provides employment opportunities for millions of people, uh, which you are, I are seeking or are currently working in. However, the sector is with several challenges, including uh, inadequate in outdated farming methods and a lack of skilled manpower. And to address these challenges and unlock the full potential of Nigeria's agri sector, uh, it, is our crucial, it is crucial that uh, we invest in the training and development of our youths in the area of agri -tech and agri business. The partnership between EcoBank Nigeria and High IT is crucial towards empowering you. Uh, the participants here with the necessary skills and knowledge to succeed in agri sector. So uh, this training program is designed to provide you with the business skills, such as marketing, financial management, entrepreneurship, technical skills, and the latest agri technologies. I would also expose you to the best practices in sustainable agriculture and agri business to enable you to leverage the latest trends in the sector and stay ahead of the, by the time you start the day, the, the, the race itself. Uh, through this training program, we're providing a platform for you to learn about new tests and innovative agri practices that can help productivity and also improve yield and increase profitability in your business. Uh, the program also, will provide you with the access to financing and mentorship opportunities. I believe that's before you join the, the, the program. It's to enable you to turn your ideas into profitable ventures that can create jobs in your communities and also contribute to the overall development of the area. And I hope the, our, our fellow uh, that is joining from Cameroon is going to move to Nigeria because opportunities are bound here in Nigeria as well. So as a Nigeria, uh, proud to be part of this initiative to empower Nigerian youth through this uh, business training. We believe that this training program will play a very critical and pivotal role in unlocking the potential of Nigeria's agri sector and to create a future generation of Greek leaders who will transform the sector and contribute to the country's overall development. I personally want to congratulate all selected participants and for being part of this program, I also want to encourage you to take full advantage of the training. Point. The knowledge and skills gained from this program would only benefit you, but uh, the knowledge and skills gained from the program will not only benefit you, but it will also positively impact your communities and the country, Nigeria as a whole. Uh, in conclusion, I want to the management of high IT and EcoBank Nigeria, this commitment to empowering the youth through this. Uh, I believe that together we can build a stronger, a more vibrant sector and can also secure a brighter future for our country. I thank you all for your attention. Thank you for being for willing to join this and improve the economy. And I wish you all a very productive and fruitful training program. Thank you. Um, first of all, I think I'll just good morning everyone once again. And um, my name is Olushe Lilia Panika and I work for the Youth in Agribusiness Office in IIT. First, I would like to congratulate and these who are here, participants who have been able to apply for the training program and successfully made it to this um, online engagement. This is going to be an opportunity to learn. So I would um, implore everyone to take advantage of this. This is an exciting journey 
to becoming a success, successful agricultural entrepreneur. Uh, we are glad to have all of you here on board. My presentation today is going to focus on overview of what the training is all about. So share my screen now so I can quickly run through that. Can everyone see my screen, please, just to confirm? Absolutely. Let's proceed. Okay. So like I mentioned, I'm going to be giving an idea of what the training um, program is all about. Um, to go through this um, outline, I'll give an introduction, the program objectives, the training objectives, training targets and selection, the focus commodities and values, and then the training schedule, as well as finally, what the who are going to be engaged in this chance to gain. So first of all, the Ecobank IT Tech Training Program to develop the knowledge and skills of young people between the ages of 18 and 40 years within the agri-food value chain in Nigeria. The direct beneficiaries of the projects were targeting 360 young men and women. And this is because we believe that the appropriate trainings and incentives in both the private and the public sector, youth can be trained to boost food production and contribute significantly to the agri sector. The objectives of the program are four. First, we um, plan to intensify public awareness of agriculture and the entire value chain business amongst youths, both those who are, um, especially those who are unemployed, thereby tapping into opportunities and wealth creation, which is what this work basically um, focused on, trying to um, expose all the opportunities that exist within the agri value chain to um, people online now so that they can explore and see the wealth of opportunities that exist within their growth value chains. The second is to create a robust or now online and offline practical training, handholding, sharing and capacity building platforms to youth in the agriculture space value chain. Third, to identify and create opportunities for prospective and existing agricultural entrepreneurs, MSMEs, leveraging resources from reputable partners, organizations, and brands, thereby achieving food and job security and stability. And lastly, to earnestly seek and partner with organizations to create access to money as well as finance for the trained agripreneurs with the aim of seeing efficiency and innovation in agribusiness. These are the objectives of the program. And then specifically the training, what we hope to achieve is to create awareness about the vast wealth and opportunities that exist along their cultural value chain. Second is to equip youth with innovative and modern technical, practical and general knowledge and skills to better position them to take advantage of opportunities to establish and run successful agribusinesses and become employers of labor. Third is to have at least 300 new and expanded agribusinesses. And fourth is to increase the growing ecosystem of agricultural entrepreneurs who will become success stories and become champions for the cause of youth engagement in agribusiness. The target criteria. Um, the training is going to both be online and online, like this is also actually an um, online session. The criteria basically is targeting youth between the ages of 18 and 40, like um, I mentioned earlier who have um, internet and enabled smartphones. We know that you, you definitely need these tools to be able to um, effectively learn online. Also, we're targeting employed, un unemployed, unemployed young people who are interested in um, agribusiness, both those who are just wanting the interest to venture into agribusiness and for those who are already doing business in agriculture and are looking to improve what they are doing or expand mode of operations. So we have the educational level of education being a minimum of secondary school. And then um, we're targeting majority of um, participants to have an echo bank account for those who are present here. Like, you know, when you filled out the application with some of the criteria um, that was also listed. Now, considering the training itself, um, this program is focused on um, three commodities and value addition value chain and include aquaculture, poultry, horticulture. So during the training, we're going to take you through the entire value chain of these three specific commodities, where we'll be speaking about production, processing, you know, whether it's talking about marketing, logistics, the entire value chain when it speaks to 
aquaculture, poultry, and then horticulture. And then we have those who are more interested in value processing. So we're going to be having, you know, a lot of these trainings regarding value addition, to each of these commodities and the different things you can do when it comes to value addition concerning aquaculture, poultry, and horticulture. Now the training schedule, um, it really has um, four different uh, categories. First of all, we have orientation and mindset change, which is part of what we're doing now. You know, as young people, not a lot of us um, value agriculture or see so the potential that it has, you know, based on how we've grown up and all of that, wrong mindsets regarding agriculture. So we'd like to, you know, shape your thinking when it comes to agriculture, you to be able to see the value in it and how you can take advantage of that. And then also we're going to have um, a technical and practical session where we'll go through all the nitty gritties and the details regarding each of your chosen or um, value chains that you're interested in, where we'll have those detailed trainings guiding you through what needs to be done along those value chains and how to do it well with the most recent innovations and technology that exists within those value chains. Also, we'll be equipping you with entrepreneurial skills um, business development skills, basically, because I mean, there are different skills you need to be able to successfully run a business. It's one thing for you to know the right mode of operation, and it's another thing for you to be able to run that business like a business to make sure that it's profitable and successful. And then also, lastly, there will be um, financial and market linkage, where business the points where you measure the success is where you're able to exchange whatever value in terms of service or product that you have for money. So definitely we all need young people, we need access to resources and then the market where we definitely have to sell our goods or our services to. So that's also part of what this training package is going to have. And then also we've been able to have, um, we're going to have seasoned experts who would also be our mentors and coaches. So beyond the training, you know, we have access to these people who we can reach out to on a constant basis to, to guide us when we're having challenges, we have questions to be able to make sure that every every point in time when we're engaging in our businesses, we have the support that we need to be able to make sure that we have that success that we hope for. So this is what the training schedule is like. Now, what do you stand to gain? So I already mentioned some of this earlier in my presentation, but just a list, just to give you kind of like a summary. So a comprehensive training on the selected commodity of you know, interest, so whether you're interested in poultry, horticulture, aquaculture, or the value addition, you're going to have a detailed comprehensive training regarding that. This training is going to be um, facilitated by industry who we've carefully selected to make sure you have the best access sources that you need. We're also going to have practical sessions and to successfully establish farms. We all know that agriculture is very practical, so it's not all going to be in classroom. We need to put our hands that to make sure that we know what we need to do at every point to be able to have that experience and then ask questions. So we need to have a lot of practice during the training too. Like I mentioned earlier, um, for, for you to be at a business, sometimes finance can be a challenge. So we're going to all help to also guide you through a bank business plan development. You can easily take advantage of funding opportunities that exist out there. It has to be with a commercial bank or even an angel investor, regardless of what Financial opportunity um, linkage is you need to be able to have a document that proves to them that you know what the business is about, and so also to them that it's actually viable, and you'll be able to make money from what you try to venture into. Also, we're going to have a certificate which will be you after the training, and like I mentioned earlier, potential fund and market linkage opportunities to be able to start or expand your business, and finally the post training mentorship. For us, the success of the training is not just the training itself, because that's the step. But then our success for this program is saying that the young people who engage during this training have adequate skills and knowledge they require to be able to run their successful businesses and then become potential um, employers of eventually. So we're going to be handing you. We're not going to just, just going to leave you after the training. We we'll have people you can reach out to, like I mentioned earlier, be able to guide you at every point. In you can reach out to for questions or any challenges you're facing so that able to guide you through that process. So basically, this is an overview of the training. Um, it's a great opportunity that um, young people need to take advantage of. So we look forward to having the board and participating fully.
And I would like to welcome you to the first day of an amazing show in agribusiness. Thank you so much. All right, um, good morning all again. Um, I'm so excited to be here. I believe everyone can hear me. If not, please let um, all right, thank you. So um, my name is Hareo Ashton Rivlin, and I'm the CEO of Farm to Feel Enterprises. And it, this journey started just like you are all starting today. And I really want to congratulate everyone who are um, taking it upon themselves to actually maximize the opportunity. I, I would like to say for a fact that um, it's an opportunity that is capable of changing your life and then your experiences. Okay, so um, I won't be doing a lot of aspire to aspire to. I'll just go on to share my story and probably subsequently when we meet again, I'll just give you a few hints on um, some of the aspects of the agri business you can actually explore. And yes, make money. That's why we all do business. We want to make money. So um, F2F, that's to feel, started about two years ago. And um, it was from a training IT organist as well. And honestly, I would really like to say thank you to Miss Shea. Is yes, so really grateful. Thank you. Um, the training was physical training, yeah. And then um, at that point, I had completed my NOSC program. I'd started a job actually in Akwai State because that was where I served. I stayed back. But then I was underpaid. Yeah, I actually loved agriculture right from time. I studied diamond nutrition and biotechnology. I even graduated with the first class. But then I... I couldn't get in agriculture the way I wanted to. Yeah, because I thought I don't have the resources. I don't have the space. Late father did not leave the bunk of inheritance for us. So there was no land to use the purpose, but I actually had it in mind to do something in the agri sector. Yeah, so um, when the opportunity came for a training like this, I opted for it. And then I left Aqua Ibom all the way from Uyo to Lagos just to participate in the training. And from the very first week of the training, because I told my I would not travel that far and then not hard to my door. From the very first week of the training, I, I got really interested because I was exposed to a number of value chains I could explore. My mindset was widened. And it was not just about um, doing agriculture the old way, you know, using your O's and classes or getting a massive space. So I decided that I wanted to carve a niche for myself in um, the aquaculture sector, but I don't want to do the whole of aquaculture. So I said, how would start processing, I was processing catfish. And then IIT was really magnanimous at the time view. They were giving us transport allowance of um, a thousand naira per day. So my transport allowance for two weeks was 10,000 naira. And then I decided that I'll put all this together and start something. So I walked up to one of the officials and told her, hey, this is what I want to do. And she encouraged me. And I used my first 10,000 naira allowance to starts this business that has um, really evolved in something that is beyond my mindset really. So right from the time of training, I got pictures from her classes, from her practice sections, and then I started posting on the social media. It's something you actually leverage if you want to go find the business world. So I started posting, I'll post pictures of fish when we visit farms, I'll post feed meals, I'll post. And then people started asking, how do you sell the fish? How much is it? I said, wow. So I have people like this who really want to buy. Then I can actually do this. So I started and I, I, I was able to make like 20 kg of fish the first time I started because yeah, I had limited funds and 
because the order I got from just posting on WhatsApp status was already more than what I intended to do with 10,000. So I just had to had a little more money to do it. And within one week, I had finished selling the 20 kg official. I was like, wow. Now, the, the amazing thing is people who bought from me were just close family and friends. And, you know, so you never can tell who actually needs what you intend to until you start advertising, until you let them know. And so that was how F2F started. And I, I must confess, it has really been a, a, a sweet experience all while, like, um, really expanded with gadgets to cats fish now smoked chicken smoked snails so um last year from last year um or two years ago to you discover that a lot of young people in Nigeria a lot of young families um were relocating outside the country you know so I, I thought to myself, okay, what can I do to maximize this opportunity? People are living. And I understand that these are local food stuff. The likes of fish, gary, all of these things are expensive over there. So I decided that, okay, why not start with international those who are going to school, just pack a food package for them that they can take with them while traveling. And so I started. And I can tell you for a fact now that the bulk of what we do in F now is to supply international audience, families abroad, um, Nigerians in diaspora, you know, students going for studies and all that. So that is basically what we do. And if you start this, no matter how you need to, you know, my customers are the ones who even tell me what is to add to the product. Um, Evelyn, can you do this for, I said, why not? Okay. Just, so now we have fish, we have gari, we have kuli kuli, we have tea, we have ogbono, we have quite a number, any food stuff you can just imagine. And then we send all of that outside the country. This this was just from a business that started thousand naira, you know, and then um, it has really really been a sweet experience. Um, I would like to encourage everyone to you know maximize this opportunity there is a lot you can get in the agriculture world there is a lot for there is a lot you know the united nations gave an outcry in 2017 and then the turn of the world would be going to 9.8 billion in 2050 and the high demand for food so you can also join to help in supply food to the world so that we don't starve food will always sell i can tell you that you will make profit if you actually maximize this opportunity i think i have to stop i see mr ludare is already on so um i'll just um hang around if there are questions and then we can talk much later when i would come back expose you to some of the value chains thank you very much for listening everybody The wealth and gold in the aquaculture value chain. Uh, aquaculture is actually the culturing of any organism, whether it's plant or animal inside water. We all know that aqua means water. So when you are culturing, when you are rearing anything inside water, it is actually aquaculture. But several people have concentrated much more on raising fish, and that is what we're planning. So the raising of fish inside water. So that one is fish farm. It's just an aquaculture. And we always do this in a pond. A pond is any receptacle, container that can hold sufficient water. Any container that can hold sufficient water for you to actually culture your fish is referred to as a pond. When we come to aquaculture generally, you discover that you need to learn and know some few things before you can move into aquaculture. Nigerians that actually engage in aquaculture today, they are enormous. They are enormous. Fish is a relatively cheaper source of food protein. It's, compare it to 
chicken, to beef, to different other. Doctors will even recommend to you that immediately you are getting above 40. It's better to start reducing all the red meat and start focusing no, the meat that can help you. So fish is a relatively cheaper source of food protein. It's a regular of the food for better health. It helps to fight some diseases. It helps some diseases. And it offers white meat, which is good for the blood, using or controlling cholesterol level. It even supplies natural oil like omega-3 fatty. This is actually very good for our health. Nigeria fishery sector harvests from both captured and cultured fisheries. Captured fishery has to do the one from the sea, you know, from the river, from the lake. That's a captured fishery. You are capturing, you just go to the large ocean, you just pick out the fish. And don't forget, this cannot just continue because of overfishing. I will soon come to that. Why cultured fish trees, which we will be referring to much more as fish farming, has to do with raising your fish in a controlled environment. So we have overtation already. We have a lot of people that just go to the field, to, to, to the river, the ocean, they just capture their fish, and they are capturing not just the big one, they are even capturing the young ones. So in order to be a way for the rate at which people are capturing fish from the water is so much, it's higher than the rate at which it is being replaced. So we call this exploitation. And the only way out for that one is for us to find another alternative in aquaculture. The number of Nigerians engaged in primary and fish production across the country is over 10 million now. And the fish contributes about one, it, 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 it was contributing about 1.49% GDP, even to our total country GDP as at year 2020, and about 0.9% in the third quarter of 2021, according to the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics. So Nigeria's total fish demand stands at about 3.6 million metric tons annually. Out of this, we are producing only about 1.1 million metric tons. From all sources, I mean artisanal, aquaculture, and industrial. Can you imagine that? We are producing just about 1.1, .1, either from our industrial sector, from our uh, fish culture, from artisanal, those that are catching the white. Why we have to export the 0.5 million, even as frozen fish? So we got this from Russia, and no thanks to the war that is ongoing. There. We also get, got some from, from Norway, from Poland, from Japan. These are all the countries that are making a lot of money from us in Nigeria because we are just exporting from them. It's an area where you can actually key in, even as a young entrepreneur. So Nigeria is really considered as a net importer of fishery products. And check the uh, graph that I put there. You will see the world employment for fish, fish farmers between 1995 to 2018. You can discover that the rate, the, uh, the rate at which people are now getting into fish generally, fish culture and everything is increasing every year. What are the gaps? We need to know the gaps that we have in our show. The gaps are enormous. Like the like Evelyn was sharing the you if all of us on this platform come in now, we will still have a lot of gaps left. Part of the aquaculture that we have is the poor quality brew stock. You just discover that nowadays, Mr. A and Mr. B, whenever they are breeding, they are brew stocks that are from the same parent source, which scientists call inbreeding. So it's to inbreeding. This will reduce the uh, vitality of fish that is being produced. And not only that, it will predispose this fish even to different kind of sickness, different kind of diseases. And sometimes you just keep on using one drug or the other, not knowing that your problem was actually in breeding. We also, so we, have, we lack viable seeds, 
This eventually leads to poor growth rate, which that you can get at four months, at five months. You now need to wait to about seven sometimes before you get the desired weight. So we also have problem of poor quality feed ingredients. The correct feed ingredients are not available. Even the few ones that are available, the cost is so high. We have discovered that several people now don't know what to actually do with fish feed. This is an area that any of us can come in. We also have another gap in the area of fish diseases. In fact, in this country, we don't have labs that we can say, that you can say that they are dedicated to fish treatment. So if you want to begin to number, you probably just mention just one or two. We are lacking in this area. So, and even the knowledge, the, the knowledge of science fishery scientists is even low in the area of fish disease. And of course, I've mentioned that we are depending too much on importation. Likewise, the, there is poor market linkage. Somebody may be having fish here in Lagos, and someone is looking for it in uh, Ibadan. But it will be think, the person in Lagos will be thinking that there is glut. Whereas the truth actually is that we have poor market linkage. Another big problem is the poor water quality poor water quality. The pH required to culture fish is between 6.5 and 8. That's the, these are, that's the optimum range. But several water quality, you discover several of them are acidic. So because of this, it's affecting the growth rate of our fish. We also have problem of waste disposal. Some people are already constituting nuisance even to the environment just because they want to raise fish. And that, I don't want you to be part of them. There are proper ways for you to dispose your waste so that you will not be surcharged or you know, contributing to the problem of waste disposal. We have problem of transportation. In fact, if you can just key yourself in to this area of transportation, even as a youth, that one alone can make you a lot of money. You know, picking fish from so so so, dropping it at so and so and so place, and you'll be surprised what you can. That's logistic issue. You can solve that problem. We have inadequate knowledge in value addition. Evelyn was just mentioning fish processing. I'll be giving you some detail about it later. You know, but. Value addition goes beyond smoking people of our fish. There are several other areas that we can add fish to add value even to our fish. So that's another gap in aquaculture. We have bottleneck in product exportation. There are different ways in which people export their products outside the country. But if you want to go through a right way, there are some bottlenecks that is really disturbing the growth of a uh, young entrepreneur. We don't have structured markets so much in several Nigerian cities, villages. No structured markets for our uh, fish or fishery products. So this has already given rise, given room to middlemen. In fact, now we are already taking this middlemen as part of our <laughs> value chain. They are also playing a good role. I'll be mentioning that later. Then the big one there is the insecurity of life. If you have your farm in a remote place, you, do, you just have to be very careful because we are having insecurity of life in several remote places in this country. Now, can I culture any fish? Can I culture any fish? Let me give you quickly characteristics of culturable fish species. Number one, it must be easy to breed in captivity. That means you should be able to get the small, small fish that will cut finger lanes. Well, or if you are stalking juvenile, depending on the size, you should be able to get them easily, either from the archery or from the wild. We have some like heterotis niloticus that we are not breeding much for now, but you can still get them from the wild, even gymnacus niloticus. That is the one that, uh, that is popularly called a jowson. You can get it from the wild. So of course the popular catfish is there. We are breeding them in the archery. If I'm going to culture any fish, it should be able to grow very fast. Nobody is ready to stock a fish and you'll be there culturing it for the next two, three, four, five years. That's not 
fast growth. The low cost, there must be low cost of production for you to be able to culture a particular fish. I should not be putting in 20 naira and gaining 10 naira. Then the fish should accept supplementary feed. This is where you discover that we have a kind of limitation. It's not every fish that actually accepts supplementary feed. Scientists are busy working on this, actually. Then any fish you are going to culture should have a good level of resistance to diseases. It should be able to tolerate poor water quality. And at the end of the day, everything boils down to Nera and Kobo. It should command good market price. Let me mention some culturable fish species that we have in the country. The popular tilapia that is referred to as a queer. So we have night tilapia like Orochromis niloticus. We have uh, the Ejao Sun, that's known as night fish, popularly called uh, the scientist, scientist called it Ginacos niloticus. I've already mentioned Heterotis uh, niloticus. It is referred to as Ica or Ofo. Then we have different kinds of catfish. The popular one is the African catfish, Clarias garepinus. Uh, we also have heterobranchus species. Some call it abori in native language. Then the cross of Clarias and heterobranchus is referred to as heteroclarias. It's an hybrid and it's actually grow faster than both of them. It is hard because it has its own characteristic. Before it starts growing fast, it will be like three months after stocking. Then we have Pangasius. It's becoming popular nowadays. We also have Parachana that is known as snake fish. And also popularly known as snakehead. These are just few of them. We have a lot and a lot that you can culture. Now in Nigeria and generally in the world, there are two types. Globally, we have uh, fish farming is divided into two sections. We have extensive fish farming and intensive fish farming. With extensive fish farming, the supplementary feed that is required is low. Whereas when you are talking of intensive fish farming, you will actually need to bring in everything that you need. The high, it needs high feed impute. When you are talking of extensive fish farming, you practice it in stagnant water, generally. Whereas in intensive fish farming, there is high rate of water exchange is very high. Your stocking density is low in extensive farming. That one means that if you are for maybe for a particular, let's say you are stocking in a particular meter square, you may not be able to put in more than two, three fish. Whereas when we are talking of intensive fish farming, you can stock as high as 50, 100, or even up to 300 fish per cubic meter when you are dealing with what we call the circulatory aquaculture system. So, but in extensive fish farming, anybody can do it. It doesn't need any expert management. But when we, we come to intensive fish farming, it requires a measure of expertise. So depending on which one you are going into. Then at the end of the day, there is low yield at harvest when you are dealing with extensive fish farming. Of course, whatever you put in is what you get out. So there is no yield. But because you are, in, you are imputing a lot of things in intensive fish farming, the yield is high in every point. But when you are discussing uh, intensive fish farming, that one can be done in concrete, in fiber, even in earthen pond, in plastic pond, in collapsible pond. Different kind of measure can be used. Then, in most occasions, extensive is subsistence, whereas intensive is highly commercial. Now, if you look at the, the picture that is being shown on your left hand, that's a picture of an earthen pond. But it's not just an earthen pond, you can see poultry on top. That's an integrated farming. It doesn't, you may not necessarily put poultry on top of your own. It may just be earthen pond that you net or run to prevent predator. The, to, the right, to the right, to my right side, you will see concrete ponds. You can see the way it is. There is net on top to prevent predators like birds coming in. Then look, you will also see next is the movable collapsible tanks. This one is made up of tarpaulin and you can set it up anywhere. It is a temporary structure. That means that if you are living in a rented apartment, you can use tarpaulin pond or the all collapsible tanks. Then right by the other side, you will see the plastic tanks. That means you can start small. Look at that plastic tank. It can contain 
hundred. If it is what a thousand, uh, if it is a thousand liters, it can contain hundred fish to maturity of about one kg. If it is two thousand liters, it can contain up to two hundred fish. So you can naturally start small, even with plastic. Then look at another another model. That's the tapone pond with plant frame. That one will be okay. That one is being displayed to you on the on the on the left side. You this one that means that you just put plants together and you are going you just put tapolin inside once it can retain water it can be used for fish culture so you don't have excuse for not going into fish farming then on the right side we have the fiber tanks fiber tanks actually last up to 30 40 years though it's a little bit expensive to start with then another type of fiber tank the one i show you first is the tapolin and is the rectangular but this is a circular fiber tank on your left and then for those of us that are living in riverine area you may decide to go into a cage culture that is you have net in kind of box type you put your fish inside and you put it in the natural environment water will keep on flowing in. all you need to do is just to go there in the morning over a platform and then you feed your fish and i tell you the recovery rate in this is very very high if you do it in the way it should be done now, what are some aquaculture value chains and opportunities that we have? I'll just look at three categories. We have archery value chain. Archery is a place where we produce small, small fish. It's like you going into a labor room in the hospital and you give back. So in the archery value chain, where we produce small, small fish, we have archery operators. You can decide to, be, to do that. If you, if you are well trained on it, you can actually do it and get something tangible out of it. Then we have post fry production. Some people don't know how to start from egg, but they can buy from those that have done that for two weeks. That one is less risky. You just buy it and then you raise it for another two, three, four weeks and it turns to fingerling. Some people decide, even under actual production, to just major in fingerlings. Some will buy fingerlings and they will raise it to juvenile. That means you don't necessarily need to start from the scratch. You can just buy post fry or buy fingerlings, raise it to juvenile and sell it out. Then, of course, we have middlemen. They don't do anything. They don't hatch the fish. But what they do is that they have contacts either via, um, via social media or whatever. They off just your phone call. They know the person that know that needs fish. They will just come to the archery. They will pick it up and add two naira, three naira, five naira. And my friend, if I am adding, if somebody is picking up 10,000 fingerlings and I decide to buy, and I buy it in from the archery at 12 naira and you are selling it at 15 naira, that's three naira. You know what it means when you multiply it. Uh, by the number that is being purchased. Some people will even purchase at 10, at 12 naira, and they are able to, depending on your negotiation power, they're able to sell 18 naira, 20 naira. So, and volume will give you the result that you want. Then we have another section that I'll quickly mention because of our time. That's the grow out section. This one, you will purchase the fish from the archery or from the middlemen, and you can start re raising them, rearing them. You can produce just to 250 grams of, uh, to 400 grams. They popularly call that one may launch. This one, that's the size that several people smoke. Although you can smoke bigger size, but you need to pour them into chunks. So you can do that. Some people produce to medium size that will cost 500 to 700 grams. Why some actually produce table size fish? You know, depending on the, on your location, you just look at whichever one will be more profitable for you to produce. Some decide to major in brew stock. That means you'll be ready to raise your fish up to one year. Do your selection. Look at the ones that have good traits, and you'll be you major in brew stock production. Brew stock currently in Lagos. Female cost around 3,500. Why milk cost a package? Why milk cost about 2,500 package? Whereas just normal table size cost around 13 to 1,500 package. So you can see the difference there when you are producing brew stock. Middlemen also operate, you can link uh, market women with farmers and you get your own money. Of course, I've mentioned transportation before, the fishmongers are there. Then the value addition is another big area. You can deceive your fabricator. 
I know there are some people, some young men that knows how to fabricate. You can decide to fabricate smoking thing that will be used to produce smoked fish. You may as well, like the person that shared her testimony earlier, major in smoking different sizes of fish. You can do fish filleting. You can do fish cake production. You can freeze your fish. You can do canning. You can do packaging. And of course, you can export finished products, just like our the first person that came up earlier had actually done. So what do you need if you want to start fish farming? Majorly, you must have interest. Then you need land or space facility. There should be good source of water. You, then your drainage facility should also be there so that you won't be a nuisance. You need relevant knowledge. IITA is doing a lot in that one by organizing this kind of training. And if you contact the organizer after, and even you have access to be mentored at least for some months. So you can actually get adequate knowledge that you need. So you need finance. Thank God EcoBank is coming up. They will link us with finance source. And then you must have access to market. Don't establish your farm somewhere that is too far from the market. It will reduce the cost that the buyer will be offering you at the end of the day. Then don't be an absentee farmer. So I put physical presence as one of the basic requirements. Although technology is helping us nowadays, you can put CCTV in your farm if you know how to use it and you monitor, you monitor whatever activity is going on on your farm every day, every time. How do you start a fish farm? Basically, select a good site. Make sure if you are using any pond, let the water table be high. Then, if you are using concrete pond or plastic, collapsible fiber pond, all other types I mentioned, the other one, movable tanks. Make sure you have a flat, dry land. Then, the location you are using should not be prone to flood, so that flood will not carry your fish away. But if you have established your farm already and it is prone to flood, there are technologies that we use nowadays so that, that you can prevent plot affecting your farm. That one we can discuss it later if time permits us. Then you should be, the place you are right, establish your farm should be accessible. It should be close to market, like I said earlier, and it should be secured. Now, look at uh, the picture that tells you, you can see some things about archery procedure. You know, how we strip our eggs, fertilize, how we add saline solution. It's a thing that doesn't require much money for you to go in and yet the only thing is that it requires your time if you are going into archery so you can decide to go into that it doesn't require much capital at all but it needs a lot of expertise and it will take your time then we have different fish farmers association in nigeria that you can join the advantage of joining these ones is that you have timely access to information you will can if government or ngos are coming to empower they prefer going through different associations because they feel that the, the impact will be much more felt through that. So, and when you are in an association, you are fighting the common cause together, you can purchase inputs in order to reduce price, your production cost, and then you have cross fertilization of ideas. There is nothing happening in your farm that has never happened in somebody else's farm. So if you join association, different kinds like World Aquaculture Society, by some Fisher Society of Nigeria, AFAN, All Farmer Association, TADAN, you know, Tilapia Developer Association of Nigeria, or CAFAN, Catfish Farmer Association, they will help you a lot. We have different fishery companies in Nigeria. I will, well, you can, we will, because we are not, um, I will not be mentioning names now so that it doesn't sound like an advert, but there are different companies that are actually making it, that are making it, and you can be one of them. You can hear the testimony of one of our right you know, that just came up earlier. So we have different types of them, and you can see them uh, there. So then, let me quickly go to Naira and Kobo as we are rounding up. Let me, if you want to establish a fish farm, I want to give you your capital expenditure for rearing pond red catfish into plastic fish pond. Why two? Because fish will always outgrow one another. 
So you need to remove the smaller one and put it somewhere, the big one somewhere. So you need minimum of two containers. Let's say we are using plastic tank. So you, if for 2,000 liters is about 75,000 naira now, and that gives you 150,000 naira. You will need to net it to prevent predators. That may cost about 15,000 or less. Your plumbing, in fact, I put 25,000 naira, but it, may, it will not actually be up to that. You need to test your water to be sure it is good. If it is not good, there are remedies. Just let us connect, you know. Then you can transport. Your, maybe you need to transport your the fiber tank or the plastic tank. Let's put about 8,000. So what you spend on your capital expenditure is about 200,000. That's 207. Then your recurrent expenditure, uh, if you buy juvenile catfish now, that is about 10 to 12, about 10 grams. It costs about 45 naira. You may get it cheaper, but let's say about 45 naira. So that would be 18,000 naira. You buy six bags of extruded feed. That is yeah, the smaller sizes. I put it at average of 11,500. That costs 69,000. Then you have 21 bags of extruded feed. That at about 10,500. That goes to 220,500. If you check the feed, you will discover that about 70% of the expenditure will actually go to feeding. So, well, your medication could take about 2,000 naira. If you are giving a farm attendant about 7,000 naira per month, that would be 35,000. But the truth is that you should be able to do this on your own at least at when you are starting. But as you start expanding, then you can now start employing more and more and more people. Then fuel for changing your water takes about 18,000. In all, you discover that you spend about 368,000 on recurrent expenditure. Your estimated revenue, we cannot have 100% survivor. So I give you about 5% mortality if you manage it well. That means that in 400, you have about 20 gone, that you are left with 380 pieces. When you catch up for four to five months with this model that I'm giving you, you should be able to have average of one, K, one kilogram per fish. That means you have 380 kilogram. That means that if you are selling at 1,300 naira per kg, you can actually sell more depending on your location. You can sell at 1,500, you can sell at 2,000. But let's take the lower range, 1,300 per kg. So that will give you 494,000 naira. If you should subtract that from your recurrent expenditure, you know you have to, uh, you, the, the issue of capital expenditure is not something that you gain at a goal. You, uh, you need to depreciate it over the years. So when you subtract 368 that you spend from 494, you are gaining 126,000. That's 34.24% gross profit if you are culturing fish. So then let's go to processing units because of our time. Majorly, you don't need much investment than to have a smoking pin. You can have different types, but for this lecture, I'm giving you 50 kg cabinet smoking pin as a sample. That one, to, 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 to fabricate it, it will not cost you more than 180,000 Naira. So if you have a process, if you decide to construct a processing shed, that's about 200,000 Naira. And you may put it inside somewhere to start with. You may not necessarily construct a processing shed. So that means you can save that cost of 200,000. Then your bowls, bucket, uh, oil application, miscellaneous, it comes to about 408,000. Then your recurrent expenditure, which is the main demand, you can start with 50 kg of fresh fish. Uh, Evelyn started with 20 kg. You can start with 20, you can start with 50. But I put 50 kg because I'm using 50 kg smoking cane. So, and that is, currently you buy it at about 1,200 Naira per kilo. You may get it lesser. That is 60,000 Naira. All your flavor, everything, about 2,000 Naira. If you are smoking it yourself, well, I just put a cost, just about 2,000 Naira. But the truth is that you are not spending anything serious on that. Total is about 64,000 Naira. Your income currently is about, like the one I sold last, is 10,000 Naira per kg of smoked fish. You know, it's ratio one to two of, of four of fresh. So from 50 kg of fresh fish, you, you are supposed to have about 12.5 kg of smoked dried fish. So I put it at 12 kg. So that's what around 20,000 Naira. That means that you are gaining uh, 54,000 Naira. My friend, that's 84.38% 
gross profit. I think you can see the reason why value addition area seems to make more profit because you may actually turn this over every week. Whereas the person that stock is fish for production may have to wait for four months. Although there is a way you can do it also, you have you space out your stocking so that you can be selling every two two weeks. In conclusion. A young entrepreneur that key into any of the aquaculture gaps will definitely have a huge breakthrough. Agribusiness involves taking agriculture as a business, taking time to learn the basic principle involved, and you give it all it takes to succeed. Agriculture is a business. It is not just something that you are, it's not a child's play something. You need to be serious. Now, doing it right consistently is the key to successful fish farming. You have to be consistent in doing it right. Aqua business is profitable and youth are encouraged to engage in it. Either as a part-time, if you are starting as a part-time, or you can do it full-time and you start employing people. You become an employer of labor. Let me stop here. Then when we get to question time, we can say one or two things more. Thank you so much.